And once more, it is time to draw. Today, I'm going to draw something a little different. Uh, a lot of the drawings that I have done have been more or less a replication of a reference. I mean, that's how I started drawing in the first place. And I started out drawing comic book characters, you know, take like a Jim Lee picture or John Romita Jr. picture, something along those lines. And I just would redraw them, but I would, you know, take this character here, put him over here to kind of create my own scenes with them. Um, and in the past few years, I've been doing that more with uh, actual pictures just to help my hand get in the process of doing the lines right because if you could make an actual if you could make an actual picture as a drawing then you're actually able to I said actually a lot haven't I you're able to do better when you create something original it's going to help your lines better so if nothing else it's an exercise but at the same time it's also a way to um, get everything lined up and it, you get better ideas of shading of how the lines are supposed to come together uh, if fabrics involved folds of fabric if hair is involved to uh, the movement you know the way a hair moves um, lighting shading as I mentioned all, all manner of things that are involved in an image so I, I draw people a lot too when I use pencil not always but a lot of time so I'm going to draw today, of course, since I'm recording. <laughs> uh, and what I'm drawing today is I'm going to draw the uh, actress who is, plays the main character on my favorite TV show. And uh, that actress is Anna Torb. I found a great picture of her, and I'm just going to try to draw it. So let's see what I can pull off. I'm going to start again, as before, with the non-photo blue. You can tell I've used it a lot. <laughs> and since I have nothing on the page yet, this could be quicker, it could be shorter, but let's just dive in. So, you're probably thinking, oh, okay, you're not going to talk about something original of his. Well, that's all right. You can't always talk about yourself. Um, sometimes you have to just go in with things that interest you. I'm not going to pretend to be Bob Ross. I was reading about him the other day, how he hated his hair. <laughs> but, you know, when he started out, he, you know, he needed a cheap hairstyle so he didn't have to keep going to the, get his hair done. And, uh, and that's where the perm came from, even though he hated it. And then later on, it became so identified with his brand that he really couldn't change it then. But he made what piece he could with it. Um, so we do what we can. Uh, you know, and I guess it's fair to talk about branding a little bit too. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be up front. Half the reason why I do this is so I'll get noticed. Hi, people, notice me. I mean, I'm doing this because I enjoy it, but also because I think it's fun. I'm going to lower where this goes. So basically, yeah, I'm not even going to bother erasing. It's not photo blue. So, I, all right, you know, the topic at hand, of course, is why, why, Len, do you keep drawing pretty girls? <laughs> well, because I can. I mean, I'm. I put together a book of, you know, drawings of like that, so, you know, it's, it's not like I can't do it. 
I mean, you're probably thinking, what the hell picture did you find? It'll make more sense as we go. Now, I'm not going to pretend that this is going to be perfect. I know better. I'm just going. And hopefully over time, we'll see improvement. Not only in this video, but just over time as general. So, um, you know, I, I liked the show Fringe from the beginning. It was weird. It was different. It was just the kind of thing I was after. Uh, it's not that, you know, I was like, oh, J.J. Abrams is God or anything like that. Um, what I what I thought was this looks like a crazy creepy show and I just fell in love with the damn show I did um, pretty much from the start and one of the things that I enjoyed about it and I was like what are you gonna say about Walter um, <laughs> One of the things I enjoyed about it is that you could jump in pretty much anywhere. For the longest time, I never saw the second episode. So while it has story progression and things going in order, it also was able to keep you up to date without having to see every episode, especially in the beginning. And that is amazing in my mind. So, I, I, that allowed me to stay with the show, especially early on. Um, you know, new shows, you don't always know if you're going to be committed to them or not. <clears throat> well, I got to be pretty committed to that show. I wasn't part of any writing campaigns of, say, Fringe or anything like that. But I liked the show. And it... it it hit something for me that I didn't think anything else was really hitting. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to keep keep watching. It was it was different and it was good. And you know, it used science and I have a science background, so hey, bring it on. I'm not gonna pretend to also with drawing, I'm not gonna pretend to keep in one space, so I might start moving the drawing pad around, but I'm going to do everything I can when that happens to make sure you can still see what I'm doing. It's not meant to be perfect, it's just meant to get me where I need to get. You know, this isn't what's doing the real drawing. That is. Help if I actually picked the right one up. Okay. Good. All right. So I keep saying so. <laughs> uh, thought that occurs to me is a, a question somebody might be asking is all right so you you like you like fringe so so obviously since you're you're drawing in a torf you've you've got to be you, you've got to actually you know you always had to think she was awesome right well she was good um and she always did a good job this is one of those things that until the end of season two, no one knew how good she was. She played, in my mind, in my opinion, the most subdued character in the history of television. And 
you know, she got awards for it, but I don't think she ever got enough credit. <laughs> she she played somebody who was very internal. And over time, they made her more external. But the fact that she was an internal character, that everything she did was motivated by something that we were never going to truly be able to see. And that was a phenomenal character choice. It works really well in a book. It's really, that's it, hard to make work on a TV show, though. And the fact that they went there and stayed there more often than not. And the reason why I say season two is because then we saw alternate reality versions and then you got to see full Livia, the alternate version of the main character. And that was not an internal character. It was a very different person. was interesting she she was on one show she got to pay one play one of the most loved and one of the most hated characters on television and they both had the same name it's just what reality are you from uh, i guess i should have prefaced that with spoiler warning shouldn't i there might be somebody out there who has not seen the show Oops. All right. So, to determine what I would be drawing today, I actually posted a poll. You know, it was very informal. On my uh, Facebook page. Asking uh, from three options. And I kept them vague. So it would be a little bit of a surprise. Uh, what I should draw. And of these three options... This was what got the most votes. Granted, I know how many votes that was. And seeing how this is only the second video that's expected. Now, my friends would probably wonder why I like Olivia over faux Olivia, since the alternate version had red hair, and I'm a sucker for redheads. That's just because it doesn't always work that way. That, and especially at the beginning, faux Olivia was pretty nasty. Like, you you took everything from, from, from my favorite character of the show. You evil, heinous. You know, it's, it's that kind of thing. So it just shows perception matters a lot, too. But to, to speak to the strength of Anna Torv's acting. You know, she was on a show. She had to play alternate reality versions of her own character that were vastly different. Uh, in season two, she had to do a dream sequence version, of, or, or a kind of imaginary version of her character. Which was interesting. Um, 
season three. I think it was season three. Yeah, season three. She had to be. Um, she had to be Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> So she had to convince everybody that, that, that she was, you know, that Leonard Nimoy's hit, you know, mind wasn't controlling her. <laughs> so it was always, you know, it was always very different and odd and enjoyable just to see what is going on today. <laughs> Trying to get where you can see a little better. Eh, no, I don't worry about that part then. Okay. In that case, let's let's dive in. You know what? Let's just dive in. Right after I blow my nose. Sorry about that. When you live in a place that has a lot of weather shifts, especially in the spring. You have to blow your nose. And that's what it's like in Southeast Missouri. All right. So at this point, I've really turned up the magnification on the source that I'm using. so that I can get a really good idea of where lines should go and where they shouldn't go. For example, these will not be lines. They'll be shading. Because when you deal with the human face, lines equal age. Too much, and you've suddenly made someone who's in their mid 30s 85 years old. Not a good, accurate representation. I noticed uh, I kind of went a minute there without saying anything. Part of it is I was just kind of focused on making sure I got this eye right. I wanted to make sure I had good shading here, eyebrow, and also a little bit of the lighting based shading that's going to come. Um, which I can show you a little of that now. I'm going to get a fun tool out here in a little while to clean up the shading. Because <coughs> part of it, of what you can do with shading, especially when you're doing something based on an actual picture, is you can do grades of shading. And grades of shading are fun. I'm using very light strokes here so that I can get a a line made by a difference of light 
rather than a line made by an actual, an actual, rather than an actual line in the skin. I knew what I meant. So, I, I will fully admit that that season one fringe is my favorite, followed by season four. And I'm sure those who have seen the show will say, well, season four is kind of season one with, uh, you know, just, you know, redoing season one with all the stuff we've learned from season two and season three. Yes and no. It helped that they had uh, one of the best villains back, but it really seemed like it had more direction than to more focus. They knew what they wanted to do with the show and what they could get away with. Part of the reason why season one's always going to stand out, though, is because the hours, even though it was on network television, the the show would the episodes would last almost an hour, rather than a writer above or below 40 minutes as is common with most shows on the same network at the time. So that was very fascinating to me. That's turning out well. Sorry, I'm not more talkative today. I, I'm, uh, I'm really engrossed in this. I'm, I'm like, oh shit, I'm really doing everything right. <laughs> Maybe not everything, but enough things. Part of the, the trick sometimes is to just look at things as a line. You, know, you hear things about writing with the right side of your brain and things like that. I, I've never read any of those books. I'll admit that my artistic instruction is largely self-taught. Not entirely. Largely. Since a lot of my, since a lot of my background on it is self-taught, I've kind of had to experiment to figure out the answers. So, people who know a lot about art have many more answers than I do. You know, I've. Oh, pardon me. I've watched a few instructional videos. Just because I'd be curious about this element, that element. And I had a drawing book as a kid. It was a, a, Star, a Star Wars. How to draw Star Wars. Lots of Return of the Jedi stuff in it. So a lot of what I know about shading and cross-hatching comes out of the back of that book. 
I don't know that I'll use much of it today, but I'll try to use some of it. I also am going to fully admit that drawing smile, drawing smiles, <coughs> not one of my strongest suits. So that's why I'm being very careful with this. <laughs> so far, I'm doing okay. I don't want to mess up. If you mess up, you just keep going. There's no perfect answer, and there's no perfect picture. There's a there's a saying with with writing it's that no piece of work is ever finished. It is it merely abandoned? I don't entirely agree with that. I don't entirely disagree with that. The reason I say that I don't entirely agree or disagree is because there does there are points where you say, well, I'm still working on it, so it's not ready yet. There are just as many times just as many times when when you say I want someone to see this. I'll make sure that you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. One note I, I received on uh, one, one note I saw recently past few months is to draw lines in the way that they are most comfortable for you to draw and I saw a demonstration of it that's why I turned the paper because for me this drawing this this kind of motion is always going to be the easiest it is for a lot of people I wanted to make sure I got the eyes right. And I didn't. I got the eye close, but not right. And let's play fair. What happened was I sank the this side of the eye too far down. So the shape of the eye was wrong. And it's only wrong because I'm going from a reference. If I hadn't been going from a reference, it would have been okay.
So here's one of those tricks that you can do with uh, with an eraser. Neat trick, huh? I use the eraser to get some of the excess out of, out of this line. By doing so, it made it less subdued. By making it less subdued, it looks less like a gap. Because you mean it just be that one should be just be a line, not a gap. Slight change has made a lot of difference there, right? And part of the reason for that is it's the subtleties that, that stand out to people. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually planning for shading. along with doing a little bit of it. I'm going incredibly light because I don't want this to take control of the drawing. I want it to tell me where things are going to be dark, where things are going to be light. Now this will stay lines here. If you're going to work from a reference, be sure to check your reference. And don't be afraid to recheck your reference. A lot of people think that a reference, you take a look at it and you're like, oh, hey, I saw it, I'm done. You can do it that way. But if you're really working from a reference, not just looking at a reference, taking inspiration from it, really working from it, as I am, then you kind of need to have that reference on hand. Okay.
you can't see me doing this, but I have actually just <laughs> laid back and sort of riding with it now. Part of it is I, I've, I've got to a very kind of calm, relaxed state. I mean, that's why I draw some is to, to calm myself. I mean, a lot of people have different reasons for doing that, to drawing, doing anything artistic. But one of the reasons I do it is because it's calming. At least it can be. Now, another reason I do it is, like I, I had done in my previous video, um, is to figure out how things are put together. You know, a picture's worth a thousand words, the old line says. Well, that one helped me figure out how to revise a few of them, a few of those words. Okay. I think today I'll just clean all this up and we'll, we'll go off of that. So I listen to music a lot when I work on anything, <laughs> and the noise you just heard was my ear, ear, my headphones coming out, and somebody out there is probably thinking while watching this, it might be years from when I'm recording this when they're watching this, thinking, well, dang it, where's our music <laughs> to go along with this? I'm new to this video stuff, bear with me. <laughs> What I'm listening to is a video game soundtrack, and there could sometimes be rights issues. So that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm not playing it where it could be heard. And, you know, I, I could play themes to, like, shows that Anna tour has been in while I draw a picture of her. Uh, that's going to bring up licensing things, too. So let's let's just not do that. <laughs> Until I can find a, a, a good, happy medium, I'm not going to do that. However, any burgeoning musicians out there, if you find you're wanting to a showcase for some awesome music, then let me know and we'll see what we can do. I am willing to work with others. You know, collaboration is a wonderful thing. Um, so, I guess the best thing to do is talk about Tesseract for a moment. <laughs> I'm working on it a lot, and it is more relevant to the discussion at hand than you might think. Because one of the things I do is you know, to, to figure out how someone moves, how they look, a character. I, I will sometimes, for lack of a better term, you know, say, you know, a lot of people say, well, who would you want to play so-and-so in a movie? Well, I answer those questions for a lot of characters while I'm writing. Those things change. But... If uh, there was a movie, TV show, or something, that last drawing I did, 
Take that as you will. That's just, you know, fantasy casting. And fantasy casting is part of how things work sometimes. Oh, hey, I'd love to see so-and-so do this. Or, you know, sometimes parts are written for people. Um, I mean, the gunslinger was written... Uh, wrote, um, Stephen King's character, the gunslinger, Roland, was written as a fusion of his father and Clint Eastwood. And we're, we're getting... We're, we're, we're getting Idris Elba. <laughs> That's a very un Clint Eastwood, un Stephen King's dad, char you know, characterization or casting. Now, you might be thinking a little bit that I'm drawing in way too many of the individual lines. Yeah, you're probably right. But in this case, I'm doing it more to get the, the little bits of subtle definition. Believe it or not, I'm almost done with this, I think. At least for what I'll record today. I'm not saying that because my buddy keeps texting me. I'm saying that <laughs> because <laughs> we're, we're to a pretty stable point. Let's see. I'm going to adjust this just a little. There we go. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to lightly just go over a lot of a lot of her face, a lot of her face. But not all. By 
doing so, By doing so, what I do is I give a, I give shading, but what I'm also doing is I'm going to do too much shading. And I want to do too much shading for a couple of reasons. And one you're going to see in just a moment. finish it up real quick and as I as I do it you'll you'll see and I, I'll, I'll explain it I'll explain it I'm just gonna get that line in there real quick since we have too much shading in a lot of spaces here we have the quote-unquote problem that things are too dark and that some things might not be dark enough in contrast. And that is actually what we're after. It's like, well, why would you be after that? I'm going to get a Q-tip and show you. So I leave the picture there so you can see it. So you get an idea of where we're starting at. And now, here's the Q-tip. Remember earlier I said, this is not supposed to be a line made by skin as much as it is by shadow. You know, I see how I've picked up some of the uh, some of the pencil lead. I have to be really careful around the teeth because I don't want them hit as much. I'm trying to show off shading, not say, here's grungy teeth. So that's not correct since I'm working with reference. Now, I mean, if you want to draw grungy teeth, go right out. <laughs> I'm not going to, not today. So that evened out that shading, made it less about any individual lines, even small lines or light lines, and made it more about the overall color. Now, you're wondering, what's that sound? <laughs> that sound is me rolling my eraser up. Taking off excess just a little bit. Right there needed some excess taken off. Okay, so now I'm going to do similar, not quite the same up here. See, we're not quite done.
sometimes art is an illusion, no matter what the format. So what I'm doing here is I spread out, I'm, I spread out the lead on the drawing of the ear and I'm putting it back to give back the darkness to the ear canal. And I'm just doing a really, really light, really simple basic shading there on the, on the hair. I'm going to kind of move in the direction that the curls and such are going in. Each wave gives its own its own little hints and clues of how it should be used. I'm still going to go back over it with this to bring back those little bits of straight hair because I like those. All right, now I'm going to take this darkened part and go over the parts I didn't shade. To create even more shading without shading. I like that. I'm going to call it right there. I'm not even going to look at that. Uh, I'm going to touch up one little thing there just because I will like it more. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit still as well. Except I sharpened my pencil too much, which is possible. Especially for what I'm about to do. Okay. I really like that, <clears throat> and as such, I think I'm going to be done right now. <laughs> All right, so it has been time to draw, and my time to draw today is finished. I hope you enjoyed it and got a little bit of something out of it. Please feel free to... Uh, you know, like this video, share it with your friends, and share it, have them share it with their friends. I'll include a reference link below, along with a few other links from my work. But, you know, I just like tossing the business card in there. It's cheap because I don't have the logo set up yet. Um, but you can find me on Twitter at SithLordLB. Um, my blog is lentberry.wordpress.com. And you can find uh, links to previous videos and writing and such in the description. So please come back and join us next time. I hope to have even more fun things to share with you then as I draw. And until then, have a wonderful day.